go. Hello, everyone. So, what you have that I left behind was some concentrated poly. Uh, that is a white, milky, rather thick liquid. You've got a glass container and you've got a one gallon tin of 100% poly. So that material is way too thick to work with. So what you're gonna do is find a container this is the kind of container I use, but it could be an open bucket, it could be really anything. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix one part 100% poly, the, white, the thick white milky material, to four parts water. So what you're going to end up with is a material that pours a lot like water, but it is going to be white. Uh, well, it's going to look like non-fat milk. So, it's a pretty simple technique. You've got now the watered down poly, and I've sent you two bags of material, uh, two different colors. One color is labeled three, that's the original color that you approved. The other color is labeled two, and that's the color that you approved with a little bit of white and a little bit of brown and red. So it's just a slightly subtle, more complex color than what you had, but it's very, very similar. So you'll be able to do samples of these, and you can choose either one. So right now, I've got a relatively small amount of the watered down poly in the bucket. Now, if I were wanting to do a repair mix with this, where I want to fill in the cracks, I'm going to make it fairly thick, and when I want to get ready to brush on the material to produce the color, I'm going to want it fairly thin. So, in my next video, I'm going to give you a close-up of what a thick and a thin mix looks like. Okay, welcome back. By the way, thank you, Cap, for holding the camera. Oh, I'm glad to be steady. Cap is uh, my partner, and this is his uh, his rig, and uh, we can hit any stucco color with all of these pigments that you, you see here. You better believe it. But I'm going to get out of the marketing talk and get back to business. So here, I have given myself a relatively small amount of the watered-down poly. You can see how much I've got there. Yeah. I'm going to add a few scoops of material. I'm adding about twice the amount of powder as I have liquid. In fact, I'm going to make it even thicker than that. And I sent you a paddle mixer. So you'll be able to uh, use any kind of a cordless to mix up your material. So we're starting to get a little bit thick there. I can go even a little thicker than that. So I think you can see just how thick that is. And that's going to be able to bridge cracks and imperfections. And uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like. OK, so here we have uh, uh, raw native cement block. It's open pores. Our material will go in and grip to this, just like it will grip to unpainted stucco. And. Uh, so what I'm going to demonstrate is how a thick mix can be used to bridge the texture. If we, if there's a crack there or if there are imperfections, um, we would use a thick mix to be able to produce pretty much any kind of texture we want, any thickness.
I don't know how much you can see how it's filling in the holes, the holes in the cement. But uh, if there had been a crack there, first of all, if there had been a crack there, what we would have filled that with was with some of the concentrated poly and then we would have fixed the surface with some stucco mix and then we would be putting color on. But you may have instances where you have some just small touch up that needs to be done. And so you'll be able to work with your guys to do incidental touch up without going through all of the steps with just a thick mix. And we'll come back to this a little later. You can see we're starting to get the fill and so forth that we want. And you can, you can take this as thick as you want to go, uh, even thicker than this if you've got a situation where you need it. So next step we'll move to color. Okay, welcome back. What I'm going to do now is mix up what I consider to be a thin mix and that's the mix we use for applying color. So again, I start with the watered down poly. And normally you would give yourself, oh, I don't know, about a half a bucket of poly because you want to have plenty to work with. You don't have to keep mixing it all the time. Uh, but I don't need that much right now. So I'm just going to mix up, I don't know, about a fifth of a bucket. And what I'm going to do is I want to have roughly more liquid than powder. So based on that, you know, you're going to get used to how you like to do it. But I'm going to say three or four scoops. So it's still pretty liquid. You can begin to feel that it's got some body to it, so it's not just like water, but it's still pretty thin. So I sent you a big brush. That's the one you'll be using with this mix. And uh, we'll go over to the block wall and show you a little brush technique. Welcome back once more. We've got our mix. It's pretty thin. It's just about right in my opinion. It's enough that we want to be a little bit careful not to have too many runs. So I normally just get a bit of the, that on the brush. Now you notice as it's going on, it almost doesn't look like there's anything there. You can see how the block's getting a bit wet. But I want to make sure I get it into all the crevices. So when you apply it to the texture that you have, you're going to be able to see the little bit of the red from the dirt. You're going to be able to see some color variation. Um, you won't be really going over repairs because uh, I've already colored all the repairs that I did previously. Um, so what we're going to do is to uh, let this dry. As you can see, the area that we went thick is starting to dry. And you can notice that it's darker when wet and then dries to a lighter color. So if after putting on a wall, it looks like you've got variation, don't worry about it because it's all going to drop in to the same color. So I'll check back with you um, and see how this wall's drying. So welcome back. Uh, on that last segment, 
you saw me brush on the material and you could almost not tell it was there. It's very transparent when it's wet, but what it does is it soaks into the body of the block and at just one quick coat, this is the result. Uh, okay, that should do it. So, uh, Dennis, um, I sent more material than you needed for that one panel. To, I guess you're going to do two big panels, the color three and the color two. I sent you more than you actually need so that you can actually be doing touch-up uh, on um, really the, the ugly spots um, now uh, instead of the using the paint like you've been doing. Uh, and then it will blend with what we do. So um, I'll check back in with you. It's already starting to dry. Uh, and we'll take a look. Okay, so here we are. Uh, that was three coats, three relatively thin coats on those top two blocks. Uh, it looks slightly different because we've got a different texture going on. Uh, this material is reflective, so that's really smooth and shiny. This is a lot more, a lot more shadow lines to it, but it's all the same color. Uh, for the stucco at Maui Hill, it's all going to come out in this kind of a tone or this kind of a texture. Um, and what you're looking at is a material that's penetrated into the stucco. That's not a layer. It's actually colored the exterior of the stucco. And that's really durable and uh, doesn't peel and I think will hold up to the sun uh, far better than paint. Um, and uh, because it's not a layer, it doesn't need any protection. So really, this only needs to be refreshed for aesthetic reasons. Whereas if, uh, if the uh, Maui Hill were painted, then you would need to keep painting it every uh, eight to ten years regularly or the paint could start to fail and to peel and so forth so uh, I think you're gonna get a longer life with this than paint and the ongoing maintenance will be substantially less so there you have it uh, you've got material you can be doing touch-ups yourself you can do your demo area yourself and if you've got any questions please let me know thank you